well, it's a very chilly night again, isn't it? Welcome back, everyone. This is a Sunday night uh, live stream from the Veg Grow Up podcast. Hope you are well. Lovely to see you. Now, as you know, every Sunday we have a topic of discussion, although we always skirt around any other issues that are going on in your allotment, in your gardening at the same time. But today I am asking, what is it that you choose to wear when you are gardening? So uh, that's the question or the topic that we are going to be discussing a little bit today. First of all, let's see if anybody is going or if anybody is actually watching. Straight away, Turbo Stream is there. Good evening, good evening, Bench Grower Podcasters. Good evening to you. Bally Cillian says, evening, Turbo, Richard, and all the other Veg Growers out there. Good evening to you. Uh, Turbo Stream again, uh, Bally Cillian again, sorry. Uh, Oracle is saying hello, Veg Grower Army, and my friend Stuart Jackson over on the other outlet. Uh, not sure if Stuart is going to make it tonight, but we'll see. Uh, Philly says hello, everyone. Good evening to you. Uh, Kate Spratt is joined and saying good evening, Veg Army. Good evening to you. Anna Jones, evening gardeners. Good evening to you. Hargrave Gas is there. Evening, everyone. I hope you've all had a good week despite the cold weather coming back. It's horrible, isn't it, this cold weather? Um, we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, Chitty Phil is out there saying good evening all. Good evening to you. Stuart Jackson is there. Evening, Richard and the Veg Army. Good evening to you. Rebecca Hawkins, good evening. Cold one this morning, minus five degrees C. Oh, that is very, very cold, isn't it? Uh, Ian Sayet, good evening to you. Hello, Dad. Uh, not just Green Fingers UK blog. Evening all from Lisa. Um, good evening to you. Uh, Digwell, evening all. Bloody cold. It is very cold. Idaho Garn Girl, evening, everyone. Uh, and he lit, she names a few people. Good evening to you. Margaret Peacock is joined. Good evening to you. Um, and Oracle says, relax, Richard Stewart Jackson never let you down. Indeed. Indeed. We've seen he is there. Uh, Idaho, uh, oh, yeah. And Chitty Kate is out there as well saying hello. Good evening to you. I um, hope everything is coming through nice and clear today. There might be slight issue with the phone line. Phone line is open if anybody does want to call in. Let me find the uh, correct one for that. 07307 135 or 174 if you want to call in. Um, I put the phone on charge today. I It was on fine, 100%. I came out here and I looked at it when I was just getting everything ready to go and I was down to 1%. I thought, that's not right. So I've had to plug it into charge while we are on the live stream. So I, I can, in these earphones, I can hear a bit of uh, interference coming from it. Hopefully, it's nothing too serious. Also, can tell we got signal issues. You know what we've had over the last couple of weeks with the weather dropping down in temperature, or the weather causing problems with signal. I can see it is. Hopefully, it will be okay. Fingers crossed. So, <laughs> all that taken care of. What do you wear? when you are gardening? What's your choice of clothing when you are gardening? Now, we've spoken a lot um, about how the cold weather recently has caused things to drop. And gardening isn't pleasant when it's cold. But, but at the same point, it is a chance for us to go out in the garden, providing we've got the right clothes. Now, I'm, I'm very good at keeping myself warm when it's cold. And one of the things that I know, it's about wearing layers. So when it is cold, it is a case of long johns, trousers, over trousers, vest, T-shirt, jumper, coat, and then a hat. Probably the most important thing is a hat. Now, I'm, I've actually put this hat on tonight because it is still quite cold. I usually... I'm not a fan of wearing hats at all. I think I look stupid in hats. I think that I find I get too hot in them. But then a couple of years ago, I just tried on one of these hats and I thought, actually, it kind of suits me. You may disagree and you're welcome to disagree on that. So since then, I've been wearing these hats quite often. And I quite, I've got to admit, I'm starting to see why people wear hats. I do find they are keeping my heat in a little bit better. So cold weather, that's where we will start, you know, our usual clothing. Obviously, I don't want to go into too much graphic detail, but what do you wear when you are gardening? 
Uh, so quickly, Turbo Streamer said, I have done absolutely no gardening this week. Frozen ground still. Yeah, frozen ground is a problem. Um, I, I, I've i um, spent a bit of time yesterday trying to dig out some of the trees out the front. Just It just wasn't worth trying to do it. It's just so frozen. But I have put a forcer over my rhubarb in the hope that we can then try and get some... Um, a forced rhubarb and today i went down on the allotment again frozen ground so it seemed pointless trying to do anything outside i did some work in my shed trying to fix it after the vandals got there last year and tidying it up and getting it all sorted so uh that you will find out more on on the video later this week david williams says hi all nice to make a live again welcome along lovely to see you uh, Kate says, my gardening clothing, I hate being too warm, so it's usually leggings and a t-shirt with my wellies. I have found out the hard way that stinging nettles can sting through leggings, a cap usually too. I'm with you. I actually do not like being warm. I can deal with the cold much better than dealing with being warm. And again, that's why layers. I have to admit, last couple of years, it's obviously old age, I'm starting to feel the cold a little bit more. But yes, cap is the way forward. Turbo Extreme says, I knock around in mainly walking clothes, so just wear those on the allotment. I always seem to go down in the freshly washed ones, though, LOL. Indeed, walking clothes. Funny enough, I often wear my walking or hiking shoes on the allotment, apart from when my I want to take or wear my willy boots. We'll get into those in a, a little bit later on. But, you know, walking clothes. I, I particularly like, when it comes to trousers, combat trousers. I wear those at work because of the extra pockets. I can stick tools in and stuff. But it's the same on the allotment. Just having those extra pockets on your, on your knees and uh, other places just makes it so much easier for carrying tools around. Trouble is... More pockets, more more stuff you have to fill. Alison O'Brien has joined. Good evening to you. Lovely to see you. Hope you are well. Oracle says, two pairs of socks, long john's best. They're normal stuff and a coat. The boots are fur-lined too. Yeah, another one for the long johns when it's cold. It really, again, I only really started wearing those this year when it really did get so cold at work and I was working on a rooftop and I went, I'm going to need a pair of long johns. And I really, really felt the benefit of it. Digwell says, hope we get some good garlic this year. They've had a fair bit of cold. I was looking at my garlic on the allotment earlier and I can say it's it's looking like a bit droopy. So I'm a little bit worried, but I'm sure it will be fine. Um, but yeah, garlic, as everybody knows, it does need that cold snap to really force the garlic into cloves. Uh, David Williams says, I've done a bit of weeding for the compost bins and sorted the greenhouses out. Fantastic. You're lucky to do a bit of weeding in this temperature, but uh, well done to you. I tend to look like a scarecrow when I hit the lottie. Scruffiest clothes I can find. I'm with you on that. Again, I, I wear, I am very bad, I should say, at getting rid of old clothes. Reason being is that I always like to keep my new clothes for best. My old clothes, they always, I, I like to save those for when I'm in the garden or when I'm tinkering around with things, either in my workshop and what have you, or decorating or doing bits in a house, you know, when you don't want to ruin your new clothes. The trouble is, I always find that my scruffier clothes are always the ones at the top because I seem to wear them more and more. The decent ones are at the bottom and never get worn. Um I've got to sort. I've got to try and think about that a little bit more. Um, Idaho says no gardening here. Ground is frozen solid. This is in Idaho, of course. Still, and it snowed again. I wear winter clothes when I'm out here. In summer, I wear shorts, t-shirts, large brim hat, clothes-toed shoes. Interesting, you say about shorts in the summer again. That's something I cannot wear. Um, I think in 2020, there was a period where I was wearing some shorts, but on a whole, I never went. We're not allowed to wear shorts at work, so I kind of got used to it. Uh, Digwell, same as Kate. Minimal clothing on the plot, tracksuit bottoms and T-shirt, no socks. Can't see the point in making them dirty and have to wash them. Just old trainers on my feet. Yeah, again, I'm exactly the same. Old clothes, 
um, on trainers. I particularly like my, at the moment using my hiking shoes and walking shoes, although I really shouldn't. I really shouldn't wear them. So, yeah. Turbo Stream, I got a trap nerve in my neck on Thursday. Standing up was absolute agony. Now all drugged up on powerful and inflammatory tablets. I only wanted a cup of tea. Turbo Stream, make sure you look after yourself. The allotment will be there when you get better, so don't worry about it. Just make sure you get that neck, that nerve in your neck treated and much better. Uh, right, Anna Jones, I always wear a fleece, a beanie hat in winter. Fleece, everything else is warm but lightweight, which is perfect. Interesting. Very interesting. And uh, uh, a beanie. I've got loads of beanies, but I never wear them. I just think I can't wear them for some reason. I look stupid in them. But you say the fleece. I'm wearing here one of my, my hoodies. I've been wearing this quite a bit lately while doing the live show. And I know a couple of you have brought some of these uh, hoodies. They're available on the web, on the, the vegcrowdpodcast.co.uk. I've got to say, I'm surprised just how warm these really are. I'm not saying them because I sell it. I, I genuinely mean these hoodies are pretty warm. Um, so, yeah, yeah, hoodies and fleeces are fantastic. Kate, I also wear knee pads. I've, again, that's something I do a bit at work, wear knee pads, but I've never thought about doing it on the garden. Good, good idea, good suggestion there. Uh, chilly, chilly Phil, sorry, shorts all year round here. There's always one that's always in shorts, isn't it? There's always that one person. Lots of layers on top, half way, half through, and always a hat. The hat depends on, type of hat depends on the year, time of year. Let me get my teeth in. Yeah. There's always someone who wears shorts all year round, no matter what. I don't know how you do it. Like I say, I can't wear shorts, even in the middle of summer. Uh, and the same with hat. I've, I've just re only in recent years started wearing a hat more often. But definitely lots of layers when it is cold. Like I say, I, am, I never used to feel the cold. It's only in the recent couple of years I've started to find myself feeling the cold a little bit more. And... Trust me, when you go into some of the freezers I go into on a regular basis, you really do feel the cold. Chili Kate says, I went yesterday, two pairs of socks, thermal long johns, trousers, thermal vest, long sleeve t-shirt, my favourite allotment t-shirt, fleece and coat, ankle wellies on my feet, hat, neoprene, gloves. And we're going to be getting into gloves a little bit later on as well, funny enough, um, as well as um, footing. Because I think Footing is probably the most important thing. But, yeah, all these layers, when it is so cold, it just, make, just makes it so much ple so much pleasure, doesn't it? Turbo Stream, in winter I wear a hoodie with a down gilet on over the top, on the plot, with a warm hat and two pairs of socks. So, but that, two pairs of socks. So, two pairs of socks. Let me get my words out. Um and what was throwing me was uh, I saw this out the corner of my eye from Kate. At least it's simple for World Naked Gardening Day. Watch the nettles. Does anybody participate in World Naked Gardening? World Naked Gardening Day. I won't be. I won't be. Nobody wants to see this. So, uh, yeah. Richard Golden has joined. Hello, all. Sorry for being late. You're welcome, buddy. Did you get my reply to your email the other day? Uh, let's see. Uh, David Williams says, I think getting stung by nettles is a bit like eating hot chilies. Get a buzz, get a bit of a buzz from it. Is it just me? I think it is just you. I can't stand it. I mean, I like my chilies, but I cannot stand getting stung by um, stinging nettles. Uh, what else? Uh, what else? What else have we got? Richard, it's not looking like 720. There is a slight issue I can see with the the signal, so it may be downscaled for that, but thank you. Um, it is doing its best. That's all I can say. Uh, Turbo Stream, dig well. I did the same sweeping leaves and pulled the, the I pulled a nerve in my back. Agony for days. This year, the leaves are unswept. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I say, Turbo Stream, you make sure you look after yourself and tend to that that trap nerve. It's not worth getting, making yourself worse. 
Uh, Oracle says, people have said that Millard, Millard, I can never pronounce your wife's name. Apologies. Millard, Millard Attire. If she was too to stand still, you would miss her. Understand her for a scarecrow. You know, I, I, you, I mean, come on. Some of you have seen my videos, especially the old one with my coat that was literally had a huge rip in it down the side when I was gardening. You know, I, I wore that coat to death. That coat I would still be wearing now if I could. It, <laughs> it was worn to death. It was scruffy as anything. But you know what? It kept me warm. Um, Stuart Jackson says, I wear an old coat and a hat as I don't have a lot of hair. But in the spring and potting on time, I wear an apron in the greenhouse just to save my shirt as I always forgot to pop an old one on. An apron in the greenhouse. That is actually... A very good idea. Um, a little apron or penny type thing. I've got, again, I'm not doing this on purpose, but we actually sell um, Veg Grower podcast aprons that uh, I, I use when I'm cooking from time to time. I haven't worn it for a while, actually. But that, wearing that in the greenhouse, that's a very good idea. I'm going to get myself another apron just to have in the greenhouse for that sort of thing. Love it. Love it. Uh, what's Turbo Stream? Absolutely, Kate. I'd walk to the plot to take my glove picks in the morning, too. I've, I'm skipping over a few of the comments because they're coming in thick and fast. So, um, if I miss some, please don't worry. Uh, Nicholas says, Evening all. Sorry for being late, being to visit a friend in a nursing home. Thank you for coming along anyway. Lovely to see you. Hargrave Guess, I wear an old pair of walking shoes, thick jeans, and a warm sweatshirt. I've also got loads of old T-shirts that I only wear for gardening now. Yeah, I've really got to sort my wardrobe. Well, we, we're we getting new wardrobe. We're hoping to get new wardrobes built at some point. So uh, when it happens, I will actually go through my old clothes and keep some that are for gardening, some that are for, for best. I mean, I'm terrible. Jeans and T-shirt is what I wear most of the time anyway. Uh, even jeans. I mean... <sighs> Jeans for me are great to wear in the garden. Like they're so strong and tough, they are great to wear in the garden. And if you get the ones that are like combat trousers with the extra pockets, even better. The only trouble I have, and you, again, you probably see this in some of my videos, I have got no bottom, so my trousers don't stay up even when I wear a belt, um, and it's very embarrassing to say the least. Stuart Jackson, we lost our local naked gardeners. The garden has been taken over by normal people. I hope that doesn't go on in the school because that would be a bit disturbing. Um, Oracle says he's putting Millard forward this year for World Naked Garden Day. <laughs> yeah. Digwell says a policeman told me to get dressed on the last naked gardening day. Then again, I was in an open plant front garden. Yeah, I can see why that would be upsetting. But hey, you did your best. Uh, Turbo Stream, I have an old walking jacket hanging up in the allotment shed in case it rains. I did buy a pair of gardening shoes, but they were the wrong size, so I abandoned them. Um, I tell you what, I'll just catch up on the comments and then we'll come to the shoes. Stuart Jackson, as I work outside all the time, I do wear, so I do wear two pairs of socks. I must look at the veg grower apron. Yeah, um, I'm going to order myself another one because it is great. I uh, hope you don't take part, Stuart Jackson, with working in the school. You put the kids off, indeed. Uh, did I? Did Adrian has joined. I don't know if I said that. Hello and welcome, buddy. Lovely to see you. Jen's Garden Adventures has joined. Good evening to you. And she goes on to say, old shoes, old jeans, and whatever T-shirt I can lay on my hands on. Excellent. Um Turbo stream, my plot is in the middle of the allotment site, so probably not a good idea to do naked gardening. Mine's alongside the main road now. Uh, I wouldn't work. Uh, Digwell says, do Monty Dodd and wear braces. So I have actually got a couple of pairs of braces that uh, to hold my trousers up. The trouble is I wear this a lot, of, or did wear it a lot of work, is they never hold on. For that long and eventually you just get this ping as this thing goes up your back um braces again braces just don't cut it for me uh, i've tried it i've tried it 
Um, a lot of leaning over just affects them. I know, I know what you're saying. Uh, and Margaret also says you need braces, Richard. Then your trousers would stay up, and they are trendy for gardening. Uh, <laughs> Chili Phil just spit his bimto out when I said I had no bottom. I was trying to be delicate about it, um, but that that is often why you see things go on that is embarrassing. Never worry what I look like on the alignment as long as I get the beds well dressed for growing fruit and veg. I think Bally Ceiling, that's a very good point. Never worry about what you look like as long as you get your beds dressed. It is about growing food and what you wear isn't important. And this is cold, of course, and that's when it really does go into life. Uh, Idaho says, yes, I wear jeans, long ones, and then when they get holes in the knees, I cut off to make shorts in the summer. Again, I can't wear shorts, but yeah, jeans, I mean, jeans are perfect, I think, for gardening because they are so tough. They, they're not very good at holding in heat, but uh, that's why you have layers. Turbo Stream, I do change my shoes if it's particularly muddy. Another old pair of walking shoes are in the shed. Um, and Oracle says, I won't be getting naked, Stuart Jackson. The birds will be chasing me thinking they are um, there's a one. World Naked Garden Go Up Day in the 5th of May, I think it was. So uh, we were talking about footwear. Uh, it seems to me footwear is probably one of the most important things to wear on the allotment. Um, Partly, it was drummed into me from an early age that if I'm at work, I've got to wear steel toe caps. So I always do wear steel toe caps at work. I never wear trainers. And I've carried that sort of same mentality on down at my allotment. I'm not saying I wear steel toe caps, but I do wear substantial shoes. Obviously, they get muddy. It gets uh, trainers. In the summer, it's not so bad wearing trainers, but trainers on our allotment, I would just slip and slide all over the place. But a couple of years ago, I decided to get myself a pair of welly boots. Uh, now, as you can tell, I'm quite big footed. I've got a size 12 shoe. So these, when I put these on, I do like look like Santa Claus, as Amanda says, because they're so big. Uh, but these, what I like about these particular boots, they're from a company called LBC Ultralights dot com something um i've had these for a couple of years they are so so light for such a big boot i mean these are probably as heavy as a pair of trainers or a trainer sort of thing it's that light and i love them for that very reason use them for dog walking but also for down on the allotment when it is particularly muddy and the best thing is because i'm size 12 i've, I've complained about this so many times in the past most welly boots, it's like you have to break your ankle to try and get them on and off. These ones, it's not. These are really easy to get on and off. They do have a boot liner as well, which comes out, let me, as you can tell, they're quite muddy because that's how welly boots should be. But the boot liner does come out on these, so like so. So you actually got a pair of, an extra pair of socks in there as well if you like, which um, help keep you warmer as well. So back to the comments. Digwell says, get some old man's trousers with the buttons for the braces. I thought about that. I had thought about that, but they don't do them in, in our, um, for the, the type that we would wear at work or what have you. They're not so easy to get hold of. But yeah, I know what you're saying. That's what I do need, the old button hold um, uh braces would be great and they do them for suits but i never wear suits so it doesn't seem a bit point wearing those turbo stream my late dad was a college lecturer and won the worst dressed lecturer for two years running i take after him that's my type of man excellent kate says whatever i wear this year i know my watermelons will look magnificent i hope that's not innuendo going on there Turbo Stream says I should dress like Percy Throwout one day. Ties and brace, tie and braces with my best trousers tucked into wellies. That would be fun. That would be fun. We should have done that. Yeah, that would be fun. Uh, Bristol Veggie Beds. Hello. How lovely to see you. I don't need to change into wellies because all my parts of my allotment have paving slabs. So it's safe whatever the weather. So I could do it in flip-flops if I wanted. Fantastic. You're lucky, actually. Um, 
I, I, I see the benefit of having paving slabs, especially when it is as muddy as, as what we've got at the moment. Uh, I think I've said in the past, my, I've got my vehicles trapped in, in the mud down on Elon, so we don't take our, our van down there during December till about March anymore because it just can get stuck in the mud. And that's just getting to the allotment, which isn't paved. So you're very lucky. But I do, like I say, do like the idea of paved slabs. Uh, Jenny's a lot garden, Jen's garden adventures. I have a ridiculously cheap pair of wellies from Lidl. They're not, they are not good. As my mum used to say, buy cheap, buy twice. Absolutely right. I do agree with that. These, I don't think, I can't remember how much. I think they're about 40, 50 quid, if I remember, which I don't think is bad for a decent pair of welly boots. And like I say, they have lasted me quite a while. So I like them a lot. Digwell says, size 12, you must float on water, feet like canal barges. It does feel a bit like that at times. Um, it does feel like that a lot. Tilly Phil says, I wear rigger boots on the alarm and easy to get on and off. Mine are still toe capped, but are lightweight, so not too bad to wear. Yeah, I thought about rigger boots. Um, that might be something we look at in the future. Uh, David says, boots, the most sensible option, but I'm much more comfy in trainers. Absolutely right. He absolutely right. I feel the same. I'm much more comfortable in trainers, but boots are much more sensible. That, again, that's why I like these ones, because they are so light. Uh, Ian Bennett says, evening all. I have brought a note for being late. Fantastic. Lovely to see you, Ian. And I will uh, want to see your lines after the show um, so we can see why you're late. <laughs> Uh, I should say, for purposes of um, keeping everything legal, whatever it is, I'm not sponsored by these people. I've not got any interest in them. I'm trying to get them on a discount code at the moment. Um, but they are a pair that I bought myself. I, I wasn't given them or anything. I bought them myself, and I'm a big fan of them for that very reason. Turbo Stream says, I need to move a few paving slabs. Nearly went my length the other day as they are slippy in water. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, if it's, yeah, I know what you mean. Sometimes paving slabs can get very slippy if they are wet. Kate says, I do wear hiking shoes when it's not muddy, comfier than willies. I'm, I agree, agree with you on that. I do wear my hiking shoes and my hiking boots a lot. Now, I'm just going to take a quick break from this chat. I have got a couple of videos from, for you. Uh, I think this first one is the Digwell Potato Challenge that we mentioned a couple of weeks ago. He's put a video out on Friday, but he's very kindly said that we can share the video tonight so that we can uh, participate as well. So let's see what Digwell's up to. Oh, that's no good, is it? Let's see. Right, let's move that. All right, and guys, here we go with the single seed potato challenge for 2023. And I'm happy to say that the seed potatoes that you just saw were supplied by uh, Bridge End Garden Centre up there in Fife, Scotland. My old apprentice stomping ground up there, called it some days up there, I'll tell you. <laughs> um, go check them out. Not only are they great for seed potatoes, great prices and quite cheap delivery as well, but all round good online garden centre. Now, pay attention guys, a little bit different the rules this year, so please watch, listen and read carefully because I'll put... I'll put all the uh, notes in the description below. Any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments or email me. Right, the rules. One entry per channel, please. UK mainland only. But having said that, I am happy to send to Northern Ireland if the recipient is willing to take the risk of the potato being impounded or whatever they do these days. Submit one video of the planting of the pieces or the cutting up and planting of the pieces, up to you, I don't mind. And then submit one video of the harvest by the 31st of October without 
revealing the weight please because what I want to do is put all the videos together at the end and we'll have a big like, like the last year we'll have a, a, a finale video with all the weights on it you know building up a bit of suspense and all that you know what I mean um please film the videos in landscape format not upright on your phone landscape makes it easier for me to edit I spent a lot of time last year cropping things and to be fair to you what I was doing was having to cut some good footage off because I couldn't get get it all on the landscape potatoes must be grown outdoors you can start them off indoors you can cut them indoors you can bring them on indoors do your cuttings indoors a greenhouse or whatever but the actual growing in the pots or in the ground outdoors please just makes it fair because not everyone's got a greenhouse or a polytunnel <laughs> like me I'll be taking part but I shan't be sharing in the uh, the spoils at the end now this is a must rule this please you must use the hashtag SSPC 2023 hashtag SSPC 2023 either in the video titles or the description again last year I was rooting around online searching for this and that trying to find the videos to put on the playlist because what I'm going to do is put a big playlist together so anybody who's interested can go and have a look at the playlist and see everybody's videos okay right there will be a little prize and award at the end and this is neither sponsored by YouTube or Google or all that lot is by me uh, just a £10 Amazon gift card for the uh, the person who has the highest yield if you can't film a video stills will do just send me all the stills and I'll put them together into, into a little slideshow for you and if you don't have a YouTube channel quite a few people don't then just send the uh, the film to me the video to me or the stills to me whatever you want and I will stick them onto one of my videos okay everyone gets a fair crack of the whip then um, if you're going to do that, let me know in the email address, I'll tell you in a second. So, a few instructions then. If you're interested in taking part, please email me, steve at digwellgreenfingers.co.uk. It'll be in the description below as well. Just to let me know that you're interested. Um, if you, and if you are interested, in that email, please put your name and address, your postal address, where you would like to see potato posting to and if applicable your YouTube channel name right a payment of £3.50 I'm afraid sorry about this is required to cover postage it's going to be a Royal Mail small parcel which is over an inch thick and there's no way around it second class I don't want to do first class that would be even dearer I can accept PayPal uh, bank transfer or a £3 Amazon gift card or something like that for the payment let me know how you want to pay in the email if you want to use PayPal then my PayPal address is the same as my email address steve at digwellgreenfingers.co.uk um what else oh yeah one more thing I want to get the potatoes in the post to you by the 14th of February so get cracking don't dilly dally email me hope that's everything good luck everyone <laughs>we go that is the rules for digwell's competition like i say he's got a video out on his channel if you want to watch it again i'm going to be taking part i will be emailing him later on so thank you very much for the reminder so ernie has joined evening richard and viewers the last three days our car spun twice and the third time landed halfway into the ditch and black blocked half the lane causing traffic hazards of living in the sticks i guess yeah it is the hazards of living in the sticks, isn't it? But sometimes you've got to go out and drive and there's no way around it. So most important thing is that you are okay. That is, at the end of the day, the most important thing. Excuse me. Excuse me. In my days, I only have old shoes for gardening, but it is a garden, not an allotment. Yeah, I think when it is a garden, it's a bit easier or you don't have to worry so much about what clothing you wear in some ways. I still wear my old clothes or my boots or whatever. I actually keep an old pair of hiking boots that even even got laces in by the back door so I can just run out or put them on the feet and run out into the garden and do what I need to do um, for that very reason. Turbo Stream, I always think a traditional wooden scrubbing brush. They are great for cleaning the mud of shoes on the plot, £1.79, an absolute bargain. 
Fantastic. Okay, you know those boot scrapers that you keep by your back door when you before you walk in, you scrape your boots and they have a little hook to take your boots off. I've got one of those by a back door. It's pretty good, I've got to say. It doesn't stop me from taking mud into the house, but that's because I want to give Amanda some work to do. Um, talking of Amanda, this is a different Amanda, though, I should say. Amanda has joined. Good evening to you. Hope you are well. Uh, also, we've got Lee Terence Connolly, Lee French Girl Army. Good evening, buddy. Hope you are well as well. Um, Oracle says he's talking to the winner. You're talking to the winner, folks. Uh, he thinks he's going to win it. So yeah, it's going to be fun. Going to be fun. Uh, I'm definitely going to be taking part, Digwell. Uh, let's have a look. David Williams, love to give it a go, Digwell. We'll email you after this live. So there you go. I'm excited for Digwell's contest. Another one. There you go. Uh, thank you, Digwell. I will fly the flag for Northern Ireland. Uh, so Amanda in the Facebook group is saying, I wear Crocs in the summer. My feet do get dirty, though. Willie's, Willie's in the... <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, wellies in winter, a thick padded gilet. I find it easier for moving around in, and old clothes. I always end up filthy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, um, it's all about keeping warm, isn't it, at the moment in this, this cold weather? You know, I, I've got, I think I've got a body warmer. I, I never know what the difference between a body warmer and a gilet is. I, I've got an old body warmer that I haven't worn. For a long time but it just helps keep that chill when the evenings get a little bit colder um just helps keep that little bit of chill off uh lee saying wait there's a competition yes check out digwell green fingers for the details on that we, we i won't play the video again but we are having our alternative veg grower um veg grower show isn't it that's what we're calling it which we're holding on the 15th of october i'm going to get all the details sorted out um over this next week and we'll go through everything next week with that so uh yeah that's something to look forward to for next week now at this point just want to remind you all to give us a like give us a thumbs up and give us a follow and subscribe if you are enjoying this show and don't forget to click the notification so that you know when we go live we go live at the same time every week but sometimes we might as we get more and more into the winter we might do some impromptu live shows um in the evening during a week or something i'm not don't hold me on that it's just an idea i had perhaps when i was seed sowing or something i can just whack the camera on um, right. So next thing that I want to talk about is about about what you wear on your when you're gardening is gloves. Now, I've got to admit, most of the time I don't like to wear gloves. Again, I find I get too hot in them and I get sweaty and and I just find it better without them. But I remember one time I was down on the allotment. As you know, I've got a, um, a lot of cooch grass on my allotment and we end up with this sort of dry strawy grass stuff that I'm as I'm pulling out with my hands one time I the the uh grass straw actually stabbed me in in the uh in the hand and it was about that deep I mean I'm not exaggerating when I pulled it out it was like that long this bit of um, grass, grass strawy grass that came out and from then on that's made me really think about what gloves I wear um, now personally I, I like a company called Briars they make some really good gloves uh, or I think they are and they're I, I meant to grab them to show you I thought they were hanging up but the, the, those ones aren't they must be indoors but what um what they are they have a leather on the front but fabric on the back and they they stretch as you use but they the leather is really good at protecting your hands so for me leather gloves are an absolute must i know some people don't like leather for quite understandable reasons uh for, for they're probably more false leather than anything but yeah i'd much rather that than get that 
that that blade of grass stuck in my hand. And let's not forget there are things like tetanus that go on in the ground and other illnesses that we could have. But something else that I see a lot of people are using, especially when we go through the photos, are these sort of rubber gloves. Now, I've got, again, these have been hanging up on the back over there for a while. So I, I, I pulled them out and had a look at them. I know Muddy Boots, I don't think he's out there tonight. He uses these sort of rubber gloves or, you know, the, the, the um, doctor type gloves, the disposable ones, while you are, while he is sowing seeds and dealing with um, composting chemicals and fertilizers and things. Very important thing to try and do. I've got to say, those chemicals can cause damage. So, yeah, gloves, an absolute must now. I still don't like wearing gloves, but it scared me to say the least. Let's, uh, Alison O'Brien says, always a great show after my uh, little slip up. Apologies for that. I did not mean it to come out like that. Nicola says, on a side note, loads of frog spawn in my pond. Really? And it's not frozen. That's quite amazing. Uh, Oracle, don't wear gloves, hands for, for like leather. Yes, I feel like that sometimes with my hands. Um, Moisturise, eh? Moisturise, moisturise. Very important, as I'm always told. Uh, Jen's Garden Adventures has sent an email, and Steve has also added the link in, I think that's in the Facebook group. If that is of any interest, there is the link up there. Uh, Lee says, gloves, I don't like them. Like to fill the soil between my fingers. But once I was playing with the soil between my fingers and found some cat poo. Lovely, yeah. That, again, is... is very um that is all a very good point he actually also goes on a little bit later have you used them claw gloves before yes i have i found them in my greenhouse and they are pretty much for those that don't know they are basically a rubber glove like this but they got these plastic claws on the end the idea being that they are easy to use for weeding and uh well, I kept them in my greenhouse. The gloves actually melted together to become a giant ball of rubber. So they're not great for that. But um, using them for weeding, i got to say, I didn't find that they were that good. They were great for raking over the soil, but that's about it. Not really great for weeding, unless you've got a very well-prepared soil. Uh, let's see. Turbo Stream says, I usually wear gloves as I found glass on my plot a couple of times. Again, this is what I'm saying. As, as hard as it is to wear gloves, I think it is important. Anna Jones, I always wear gloves in the garden. I have pond gloves, rose pruning gloves, general garden gloves, and for really fiddly jobs, I use marigolds. I hate bare hands when gardening. I've got to admit, I, I prefer bare hands, but I do know what you're saying. It is concerning. Uh, Digwell says, I used to wear Crocs, but my feet got very sweaty. Um, and Lee says, thanks, Steve. I'm missing, I'm not sure. Uh, Stu Jackson says, most gloves I have used all end up being back in the greenhouse, unless I am pulling nettles, etc. But again, the bit, buy the best you can, as the cheaper ones don't last. Now, this is something that you you brought up a very good point. One of the homework that I set for last week was to find out how many pairs of right-hand gloves and left-hand gloves you actually have. And usually I find it's either the right-hand glove that gets worn out before the other. So you end up with one glove that's good and one glove that's bad. I bet you had to throw both of them away. A bit wasteful. Anybody knows I hate waste, but that can be a bit wasteful like that. But yeah, I've got a huge box somewhere full of gardening gloves. I'm not sure where it is, otherwise I would have brought it in to show you. I've got some that go up to your arm, some that are insulated for winter, etc., etc. Again, this is all... Gloves are very important, and you can never have too many uh, gloves, but do buy decent ones. Idaho says, I have many pairs of gloves, leather ones for pulling out thorny things, but I buy the inexpensive knit gloves that have some thin rubber, thin rubber coats, the palm and fingers. Yeah, I know what you mean. They're, they're, yeah, so you just get that little bit of extra protection. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ernie says, all good, thanks, but thank you for asking. It's a part of the road that the sun didn't reach. 
was helped out by locals, bless them. Well, main thing is that you are okay, Ernie. There's nothing worse than a car crash and you not being okay. Um, a car can be replaced. I don't care what anybody says, a car can be replaced, as annoying as it is. Nicholas says, I tend to wear walking boots when gardening to help support my ankles. Um, yeah, with the amount of land that you have, it, you probably do need, you probably do do a lot of walking anyway there as well. Digwell says, I go bloodless as I made the plot from scratch. It was a field before I got there. I know that what is in the beds, etc. Yeah, I mean, that's, you are very lucky in that front. You are very lucky that you have controlled it like that. But you have, you know, I still say, it, it, for me, it was that, that bit of strawy grass that I literally pulled out. And it was so... I literally felt like I was pulling it out and he just kept going and going. Um, that was what changed my mind on that front because it wasn't pleasant at all. Uh, Turbo Stream, I was given a job lot of gloves for my birthday. Probably will last a couple of years, hopefully. It just annoys me, though, that in some ways you can't buy right-handed gloves on their own or left-handed gloves on their own, if you know what I mean. You have to buy a pair, but always only one wears out but you've got to replace both of them i'm probably being very fastidious and you can tell me i am i just don't like waste and that is one of the things that does annoy me right quickly grow along i've got a grow along video that i want to share with you um so let's have a look at this right, well this week you guys decided what we're going to grow in the grow along and you guys decided it's going to be cauliflower all year round so very simple to grow well cauliflowers are not simple to grow but very simple to sow the seeds all we're going to do is sprinkle all the seeds all over the compost this is seed sowing compost these are my usual seed trays that i use a lot you've probably seen them many times by now it's all the seeds sown now these seeds can be sown January to May or September to October, so plenty of time. I've sowed the whole packet because I'm just trying to use up as many seeds as I can. What we're going to do now, cover this over with some seed compost. So I'm doing this from a height to get a good, good, good load of coverage. These will stay in this greenhouse until they germinate. And then that should hopefully go on. We'll have to prick them out as they grow. And then they should grow on to get some good cauliflowers. We'll follow those throughout the journey like we are doing. Now my onions, they, as I said last week, they've started to germinate. They're still well, more or less at the same, or shown a bit more growth, but not a huge amount. Chilies are still waiting on. Now next week I'm thinking we need to sow some herbs. I'm thinking basil, coriander or parsley. What do you guys think about that? Let me know. So there we go for next week's grow along. You guys decide whether we should do parsley, coriander or basil. Let us know in the comments. I have added, and I realised I haven't done it today, the link for if you want to click on to zap yourself in. That is up in the comments right now if that is of any use to you. Unless you're in the Facebook group because it doesn't come up in the Facebook group. Now Kate says, I always wear gloves but I go through them quickly as they don't seem to last. My plot was inherited and I found some glass and sharp things. Um, and she goes on to say, I would love recommendations for good ones. I have small hands, which makes them harder to find. I highly recommend Briars as a glove manufacturer. Um, from my experience, they seem to last. They're comfortable um, and they do the job exactly as required. So Briars. B-R-I-E-R-S, if that is any of use to you. Anybody else got any ones that they recommend? Then let us know in the comments as well. Oh, my coffee's gone cold while we've been chatting tonight. It is very, very bitterly cold this evening. When I was shooting that video for the Seed Sew Along, um, it, it was 17 degrees C in that greenhouse, and it was lovely and warm. Absolutely lovely in the greenhouse because uh, all that solar energy is going into it at the moment. 
Um, I just wish that would last everywhere else. Uh, Bally Seed says, which, where did you get those narrow trays? Been searching the internet and I can't seem to find them. So mine actually came from a local garden centre. They're made by Stewart's, I think they are. They are, I think they're called quarter seed trays, but I could be wrong on that. Um, but I've seen them on Amazon from time to time in the past. So there might be a place to look. Type, type it down as quarter seed trays on Amazon and you might find them. Um, that's the only, only place I can think of, unless you are local to me and can go to my local garden centre, um, which is very expensive, to be honest. But I brought those. I brought those seed trays. I know the ones you're talking about. These ones here. Um, let's, these are the ones you're talking about. Yeah, they are. I brought these because they fit in our heated propagators nicely and I can just move them along quite easily. And they're quite a few years old. I've probably had these 10 years now and they still last. So I'm there's no details on them where they came from, I'm afraid. Jen's Garden Adventure says, I always find small gloves in the cheap shops like B&M or Home Bargains, and they're always good brands. I have a few types of glove by, I, I have a few types of glove, but I hate the feel of them, so I only use when absolutely needed. Again, I always find gloves, I don't like wearing gloves, but we, I feel we should wear them after all these accidents and stuff. Turbo string. Decent gardening gloves seem to cost a fortune. I wasn't impressed with the Wilco ones I brought last year. They were cheap, though. But that's the thing. Decent gardening gloves. It's like anything in in our in our lives. You buy, buy cheap, buy twice. You buy decent, they last. Um, yeah. Yeah, again, I know it's easy to sit here and say buy decent. Um, not everybody has the money. But again, if you're buying twice when you would could buy one pair, then that, that makes more sense. Jens Garden Adventures, me too. Home Bargains do... Oh, sorry, this is David Williams to Jens Garden Adventures. Home Bargains do two pairs for less than a fiver and they last. Fair play. And Anna Jones says, down in town and country, master gardeners are very good old sizes i think i've seen town and country as well um just uh, probably in my box of gloves they're probably in there nicholas says a company called in excess are selling leather gloves for five six pound also the cheaper gloves for one to two pound they sell excess stock nicola is in excess down your way i've i've had a conversation with kate the other day about uh, this very subject and um I uh oh, about in excess. I, I on my way to Bournemouth for work, there was always an in excess on the way back that I always stopped in, and I was always impressed with their low prices and the quality. In fact, anybody who knows that I use the root trainers will know I bought a lot of them. And uh I went into that Ringwood store one day. I know most people this probably means nothing. I went into that Ringwood store and they were selling those a box of the trays for two quid for the entire lot. I snapped them up, absolutely snapped them up and uh, haven't looked back since. So, yeah, very happy with those. Bally Soon, there's all thanks. There's always a narrow space left in the cold frame. That would be handy. Uh, what was that about? What was that about? Not sure. Um, Nicholas says she orders online from the one near Southampton. Yeah, there's quite a few out there now. Uh, Jen's Garden Adventures, to be fair, Groupon usually has great deals and I've got some great good gardening kit off. They're reasonable priced. I got a load of Spear and Jackson tools, half price on there. Should check for gloves. I've, is Groupon still going? I, I didn't think that. I didn't realise that was still going. But yeah, I, I take your point. Um. As I said, gloves, I think I like to go in and try a pair on, if I'm honest. They're a bit like shoes and stuff. You want to try them on and make sure they fit and everything. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, Bally Cillian is the trays. That's what he was saying. Thank you for. Thanks. There's always an space left in the cold frame. They would be handy. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, these like I say, these trays are great for that very reason. I'm just going to move my heater because it's getting so cold that that's better. That's better. Anyway, right. So, anything else anybody wants to add to what they wear when they are working down on the garden or on the allotment? Um, anything else that I haven't quite covered that you think should we should add to this mix? Let us know in the comments, or you can call in or zap in depending on what you want to do um nicholas says gunners world live does spear and jackson at half price and shows are always good to go for these sort of things and get good discounts as well i do find that you get to talk to the people as well um i, I think is a gun shows coming up soon so what, I have to ask what garden shows is everybody going to? Uh, Jen's Garden Adventures. You have to really search for stuff as it's more aimed at days out and weekends away. This is Groupon, but they have some excellent shopping deals, plants, bulbs, tools at certain times for the year. Excellent. Okay. I didn't actually realize it was still going on. Groupon. Turbo Stream. I do have a pair of builder's gloves, which seem to be lasting okay so far. Yeah. I, builder's gloves. I mean, Again, we're doing some big work. Builders' gloves are probably the, a good thing to wear as well for their extra protection. I mean, nothing really will get through those unless you are really, really unlucky. Jen's Garden Adventure says, I wear a baseball cap in summer and hoodie in winter, although I sap heat stroke fast, so generally nip in and out and stay hydrated in the summer. It's a good point, actually. You know, we've spoken about quite a bit about clothing being protective in the winter and wrapping up warm. But in the summer, of course, I mean, I, yes, I, I suffered from heat stroke. I spend far too long in the sun. And uh, suntan lotion, I know it's not necessarily a, a something to wear, but I always put it on in the summer when I'm on the allotment. I have spent way too long in the sun before, not drunk enough water, and ended up paying for it the next day because I just felt so rough. Um, again, I know... I've said I can't wear hats, and that's definitely a case in the summer. If I wore this in the middle of summer, I would look very stupid in it. But that being said, it would certainly help at keeping the uh, the wind out, the, the sun out. I'm going to take this off because I'm actually, my head's starting to get a bit hot and what have you. Um, excuse my hair, it's a bit messy today. But yeah, staying hydrated and, and summer, being able to have some nice light clothes so you don't get too hot. You're not going to go wearing a thick hoodie and jumper down on the allotment in the middle of summer, are you? Uh, I have to use factor tar on my head. Oh, how said dig well, yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's that whole, the sun beats down on the top of your head and get burnt. It's, you know, I get that. I do get that. I know I've got a good set of hair, although I'm going grey these days. Um, it still does, suntan lotion, you know, factor 50. You've got to wear it. You've got to wear it when you are in the sun. Uh, right, Toby Stream says, I tend to go to the Ulamin in the evening in the warm weather when the sun has gone down behind the trees. I hate being too hot. Yes, I agree with that as well. I tend to try and go early in the morning if it is really hot and late in the, or in the evening when it is a bit cooler to the Ulamin or even the garden. In the middle of the day, just forget it. Just forget it. I'll be in the van with the air conditioning on is, is the best way. Nicholas says, big floppy hat and sunglasses on my eyes really hurt later. Had heat stroke several times and it's not nice. Gloves, sunglasses, yeah. Um, actually, eye protection is something we haven't mentioned at all. And I'm very bad at using eye protection. I usually always have sunglasses on, especially when I'm on the allotment. I get, I actually get headaches from bright lights. So in the, the sun can give me headaches so i've always got sunglasses on but we're meant to be wearing eye protection all the time if you're cutting wood or something just in case something goes up and gets into your eyes i never do and i'm very bad at that Stuart jackson i've got a great waterproof jacket this weekend from a local farmer shop moles also they have good quality tools at good prices moles yep yeah, they're all over the country moles country supplies or something aren't they they're like a farmer supply shop. 
Uh, I'm one of those people who doesn't feel the cold, so I have to rely on the husband or mother-in-law to tell me when it's really cold and I should wear warmer clothes. I'm that shorts in the snow person. There's two tonight that wear shorts all year round. Um, it, the, yeah, I don't know how you can do that. I really don't know how, but hey, each their own. Uh, Turbo stream, I had prickly heat when I was young. Never again. Exactly what I'm saying. You know, it... We often talk about wearing warm clothing, but when it comes to the summer, we've got to think about cool clothing. I mean, something I a, a trick that I, I I do do from time to time is if it's summer, I'm usually wearing a t-shirt. But if it is the hot, I would actually put a long sleeved shirt on, just a very light one. Now you may think that's counterproductive, and in some ways it is, but it just keeps the sun off your skin. Like I said, suntan lotion. Very, very important. It's getting really cold now. Really cold here. Um, I don't know what, where that cold is coming from, but this heater, come here. <laughs> Kate says, I have goggles and a face shield that attaches to the goggles when I'm streaming. Good point. You know, I was, I was talking about eye protection. Goggles when streaming, we should be wearing them. Um, I do, when I'm cutting down my... When I, if I cut down the trees at high branches using a chainsaw, I do have this sort of um, face shield. It's like a, a builder's hat with a mesh that comes down in front of your face as well, which, you know, that's a very, very good thing to stop yourself getting hit or getting anything in the eyes and damaged when doing that. Again, uh, very, very good. And... Uh, Anna has just said, don't forget ear protectors when using loud equipment. Um, yeah, again, that's something I don't do. That's something I don't do at all. And I should do because I use my ears a lot. Uh, um, yeah. I use my ears a lot. So, yeah, ear protectors, definitely. Definitely. Those little buds that you push into your ears or the big over ones. Uh, Nicholas says, I also wear a builder's tool belt where I can snatch second tiers, string, towel, trowel, etc. Yes, if I forgot about that. I've got something similar. It's a neoprene sort of tool belt with a couple of pockets, and I've got gloves, um, I've got string in there, but I've also got my Hori Hori knife on there. Uh, again, that lives just inside my kitchen door, so I can grab it as I go out into the garden. Very, very good. Uh, Nicola also says, I have the gloves helmet, like you said, has the ear protection attached. Yeah, ear, gloves, everything, and your head. Great for when you are cutting trees down or branches from high above. Right, um, something that we do every week is share your photos that you have sent in. Now, I've got to apologise. I didn't get the chance to turn this into a video this week. And in fact, I don't think I brought my notes with me. So this is going to be a little bit tricky. So I'm going to have to rely a lot on my memory for, for this. So um, fingers crossed I get this right. Unfortunately, I just run out of time today to do this all. Uh, so these first one, it came from Rebecca Hawkins. Have, have I seen her today? I hope she's okay on, on out there. Um, this is her gun, completely covered in frost. And uh, as you can see, more and more of it. I do love her gun, though, I've got to say. It looks absolutely stunning. Um, but, yeah, you can see just how much of a frosty uh, field that is going on out there. Um, and this one, uh, I'm not sure what plant this is. It's a bit difficult to recognise it, but it is completely covered in frost. So next, this comes from Turbo Stream, Adrian. Again, another frosty look at his allotment. Uh, but we'll follow this up with his gloves. So we've got the rubber gloves, the builder's gloves, and some just warm gloves for when it is cold. Following on from that, Ian Beddo sent in this picture of the carrots that he has collected and thrown in the back of his van. If you believe that, you believe anything. Um, but I've got to say, what a, what a very artistic way of loading up the van. A lot of carrots there. A lot of carrots. So, who was this one? Who was this one? I'm trying to remember. It looks very familiar, so I should know it. I think this, I can't remember. Can't remember who this 
this one was, so apologies. But again, ah, no, it was Stephen. I remember now. It was Stephen. I should know it because I've been there. This is Stephen on top of the downs. As you can see, he is. He was up there first thing this morning, just as the sun was rising in the distance, and it looks absolutely stunning. And again, this is the size of his plot. It's a very, very tiny area. Uh, next, we have Anne all the way in uh, Quebec, Canada, completely covered in snow. This is her garden. This is her plot, completely covered in snow. She ain't doing any gardening in this. Uh, Kate sent in this picture of her hydroponics. And as you can see, the leeks are starting to show and grow. Looks absolutely beautiful, I've got to say. Very interested in hydroponics at the moment. This is something that I'm keeping a close eye on and uh, would like to see more of. So please do keep us posted. Um, now, who was it? This was Jenny, and these are the gloves that she uses. And so you've got the fingerless gloves in the top right hand, uh, left hand corner, sorry. The marigolds on the right hand top. Um, and the other gloves down below for extra protection when and, and as and when needed. Uh, next we have, this is from Amanda. This is her little puppy. What a cute little fellow. Now she brings this up because I mentioned on my podcast that uh, when I take Roxy down to the allotment, uh, she can be quite adventurous and wants to go running and roaming around all over the place. Um, but we're not allowed to do that. So I've got to find a way of trying to train her to stay in the allotment. She says she uses this ground, uh, hook that screws into the ground and doesn't let him run off now i did have one of these but we were i got a, a telling off from a vet for using it so when roxy was young now she's a bit older i think she'll be okay so that is the photos that have been sent in this week please do send them in i apologize if i've forgotten everyone that i've um a memorable i'm quite impressed with myself for that but uh Hopefully next week I'll find the time to actually pull that into a proper video. Apologies once again. Turbo Extreme says, good point about ear protection. I have slight hearing loss now from 30 years in a printing factory. Currently have tinnitus because of it. Yeah, um, I know what you mean. Uh, you know, I didn't think about ear protection and I, I've got very sensitive ears. I can, I can hear things that in recordings and stuff that most people don't normally hear. But I also, I've got this hearing that I cannot, if I'm in a noisy environment, I cannot tune in to any one sound. I just hear everything. It's why if I'm in a pub, you'll see me on the phone because I don't want to engage in anyone because I can't hear what anybody's saying. Um, so I know how you feel. It's a good point about ear protection. Uh, Digwell says, speak up, buddy. And Turbo Stream says, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. There was gonna some somebody was gonna do it. Bally Cillian says, My hearing is so bad they fitted me with a hearing aid, but the first day I wore it, I was hearing too much. So it's been in the drawer ever since. I kind of get what you feel. Like I say, with my hearing, if I go into a noisy pub, I can't oh I can just hear everything. So I kind of get what you mean. Um it's not pleasant, it's not pleasant. Anna Jane says, great photos, everyone. Indeed, there are great photos. Ian Beddoes says, I also have tinnitus after an operation. I think I had tinnitus the other night. It's nothing more annoying than it, is there? And Turbo Stream says, well remembered, Richard. I'm impressed with myself for remembering all those. That was a challenge to try and do it. Uh, so, as you know, each week I am, um, where's the overlay for it? Each week I'm setting the Veg Grower Army Mission of the Week. I've got to change that overlay. So what we're going to do next week, and this was a conversation that we were, or started off with Kate the other day in the, in the Facebook group. And it's about if you, have you ever been on any um, gardening courses or anything like that where you've gone to learn? So the mission for the week is to think about how much you would pay for a gardening course. And next week, what I want to discuss is find out what courses you've been on and what you got from it and whether you thought it was worth doing. So gardening courses next week. Um, hope that makes sense. But just for this next week, think about how much you would happily pay for a gardening course. 
Now, Turbo Stream says, my hearing loss is on the high frequencies. Hoping hearing aids will train my brain to forget the tinnitus. I struggle in crowds too. I'm with you on the crowds because I struggle with that. Um, it's I, I don't actually have a problem with my hearing. It's just I cannot tune out all the background noises as easily, um, which is probably why I'm a bit of a fussy daddy when it comes to audio because I do... Tip. I do spend a lot of time criticizing bad audio. Anne Wright says, always have a selection of hats and gloves in the car for all gardening jobs and weather conditions. Never used to weed wearing gloves until I encountered a parcel from the neighboring cat. Yuck. Yeah, I'm totally with you on that. Totally with you on that. I think you're the second person to have mentioned that as well. Uh, there's nothing good. I mean, cats pooing in the garden. <laughs> I think a cat coming into our garden would be brave these days because Roxy would be straight out there. And trust me, she'll chase a cat. Turbo Stream says, sorry about that, Ian Beddows. Indeed. And Jen's Garden Adventures. I've seen a lot of courses pitched by YouTubers. Might have a look at the prices to see what's on offer. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, that's it, it's a good point. It's pitched by YouTubers. Are the uh, and I don't want to criticize any of the YouTubers. Everyone's got to make a living, but do these YouTubers really know what they're doing enough to teach? And I don't mean that as a criticism at all. It's just my question that I would ask on that. And the only way you can answer that is by you um, feeling it, you know if people leave that course happy, then that's what. That's all well and good. I struggled at Garner's Wild Live to hear Francis Topel talk. Too much background noise. I was with you. I was alongside you for that, actually, Adrian. And I totally agree with you. Trouble um, in crowds when when females talk, especially on a microphone. This is not a sexist remark, but females have lower frequencies. Uh, males like myself, I've got a very deep voice, so my voice carries. Females, you have to get the microphone a lot closer or turn the volume up so everyone can hear them. And it, again, I work with audio or for the podcast. I've learned a lot from it by doing that. Oh, cool. Is Stuart Jackson changing for the Q&A with being a teacher? Like I say, we're just waiting. We, I need to get Stuart Jackson to zap in one day so we can test out the link again and see if I can actually hear him. And then we can figure out the Q&A. Um, it, it is in the pipeline, Oracle. I do want to get him on for this Q&A. We just need a strong signal. Digwell, I do wear long sleeves when harvesting parsnips. I got photo phytophotodermatitis a few years back. It hurt. Is that from the sap from parsnips? Um, is that the from the sap on parsnips? Because it's quite close to giant hogweed in some ways. They're all members of the Amplifier uh, family, and that giant hogweed can burn your skin. Absolutely. Jen's Garden Adventures, that's what I look at and assess. Are they offering good content and is the content worth it? Again, this is it's it's a very good question. Again, I um this is something we'll we'll get into that next week. We'll get into that next week about these courses um and how, how you go through it. Uh, I don't want to ruin too much and use up all the content this week instead of next week. Stuart Jackson, please all wear goggles. My uncle lost one eye using a streamer many years ago. Don't take risks to save time. Yeah, I I'm pretty bad at that. I'll be honest, I am very, very bad at that. And it's something that I have got to le learn. Uh, Digwell, yes, it was the sap from the parsnips. Yeah. I mean, I know the sap on parsnips can be pretty brutal. And colli um, not cauliflower, even carrot sap can sometimes, if you are susceptible, can sometimes burn as well. Um, again, all members of the Amplifier um, family. David says there's a Genesis song, Revenge of the Giant Hogweed. Indeed, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jen says, certain pitch of voice carry differently. There is a difference between male and female audio. Having worked a lot with it in college, we always had to work hard to get certain voices amplified. Yeah, yeah. This is something I've learned sometimes. When I go to Gardner's World, I might have 
Uh, if I'm chatting to Saul Walker and Lucy Chamberlain, I forgot a surname for a second there. I, I can't believe it. I love Lucy. Um, I have to give Lucy her own microphone. Saul, my voice is Carrie, but Lucy is, I've got to give her her own microphone to make sure we catch her, her voice. Now, I was just talking about uh, getting Stuart on the screen to see if it'll work. Hello, Stuart. Can you hear me okay? Evening. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, it's working. Yes. <laughs> so let's just see if it carries for a few minutes. Last time we were here, I couldn't. It kept freezing on my end from you. So it's all down to this phone signal. Oh, it is. Yeah, living it in the sticks like I do. It's you get it one day and it's perfect, and then the next day it's rubbish. Yeah. Yeah. It's all to test for this Q&A. I think it, the way it is today, we would be able to do it. So, Yeah, yeah I'm keen. Yeah, I'm happy to have a go. And, you yeah. know, if it, if it fails, we, we can always have a backup plan. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I will email you and get some dates in where we can do that then, yeah. Stuart. Well, um, yeah. Stuart, you've been talking a lot about this eye protection, particularly with your uncle when streaming. Yeah. Do, don't cut corners. Cut, I know I wear glasses, but I still put a pair over the top. Um, he lost his eye from a stone. Yeah. You know, and it's it, it just happens. It, you, it just happened. And, and he, he was an engineer. He should have known better. You know? Yeah. Um, at work, he'd wear them all the time. Um, and you do, you go to the shed, you get out what you want, you, you do, the, and sometimes you just forget, you know, it, it's, uh, it's like when I'm at work, I have to wear gloves all the time if I'm using tools with the children, because you have to set an example. Yeah. But when you're at home and you, you've got the secateurs in one hand, how often have you got a pair of a glove on the other hand? Very rarely, you know, yeah. and... I cut, I, as you probably remember, I cut a pair of headphones listening yes. to the pop with a secretary. And it's so easy done. If, you, if your tools are sharp, you're going to cut yourself. So yeah. it, I am guilty at home. I do not wear gloves very often, um, purely because I can't feel what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I know what you mean with that. I mean, I when I'm at work, again, I should wear gloves more often. Um, but I never do. But on those odd times that I do, I, you know the disposable latex ones that really grip to your skin? They yeah. are great for those delicate things. One, you get a bit more grip, especially with the rubber. But two, you can still feel what you're doing. But when you go for, say, these ones, you know, there's, they don't exactly give you much feeling, much when you're doing it. I like, especially if it's pricking out or something like, or taking, you need to feel so you're not squeezing it too hard or, you know, it's, you don't want to damage the plant if you're moving plants on. I think that's my biggest problem is when I started, I thought, oh, keep my nails clean and, you know, yeah. keep your hands clean. And, and yeah, you get dirty hands. It's easy to solve. You just get a block of soap and you put the soap in under your nails. Yeah. Yeah, then, you said that before. You know, that's the easy thing, but you know, safety equipment is is use that word for a reason. It's safety equipment. Yeah. Um, so goggles and earmuffs. Really, we should wear them all the time, really, because there's nothing worse than hearing loss or blindness. You know, if you can't, I'd be lost if I couldn't hear the birds outside in the morning and I couldn't see what I was doing. Yeah. It's, it's a second, isn't it, to put a pair on. It's all it is. It's like yeah. you listen to a podcast, you put headphones on. Yeah. Well, I do. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you're saying. And it's the it, same as if you lose your eyesight. You know, mm. it's, um, I think Jen is, what Jen's saying about eye, eye protecting at home isn't something we think about. It's always a thought of as heavy duty and not domestic. Yet we forget one stone stick clump. Could be the one thing yeah. that injures you seriously. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, if you're at work, you're probably the same. You've got to f sign the little forms to say you've read and understood your training. And so 
But at home, you don't do that because it's just you go to the you go to the greenness or the shed and you get what you want. You go and do it, and then you think, "Oh, I should have done that." Yeah. Or you, somebody comes out and distracts you. You take them off, and then you don't put them back on again. Yeah. It is. It's it's just getting into a good habit. That's all, really, isn't it? It's, you know, I'm I'm a relatively new gardener. You know, I've always mowed the lawn. Yeah. But never wear glass. Never wear glasses when I mow the lawn. Only if I get the strimmer out. But yeah. the mower is just as dangerous as the strimmer, you know. So I was going to say, I've had it when I've been mowing the lawn and it's a stone or something in there. And it's because, you know, we've got that fence along the metal fence. I just hear yeah. this huge yeah. ping and it yeah. is a stone. And I think if that was somebody's eye or the window, that would not have been a nice result. I mean, I have to keep Roxy indoors if I mow the lawn for that very reason. And the chicken's away as well for that matter. I, you know, I probably my own worst enemy. I wear shorts in the summer, and mm -hmm. I've got a pair of trainers on mowing the grass. But yeah. you know, I'm, I'm my own worst enemy at times. So, but I do try, I do try to remember to cover my legs up and my me, me, me eyes up. Um, yeah. But it, I think working in a school gets you into the habit because you have to. I have to put the gloves on if I'm using to any tools. Yeah. So and we, it's a little bit different. You, you put a hand, a, a, a glove on the hand that the tool's not in. Because if yeah. you've got a pair of pairs in your right hand, you can't cut your right hand. It's your left hand you're going to cut. Yeah. You always put a glove on the other. And the kids, you know, as they get older, they remind me. You haven't got your, glo yeah. you haven't got your gloves on. You haven't got your gloves on. Yeah. So it's great. And that's what we all need. We just don't need somebody to remind us to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm going to, I'm following this conversation tonight with you and everyone else. I'm going to make a conceited effort to remember to pop gloves, pop goggles, um, maybe even ear defenders if a job calls for it um, yeah. every time. You put it in the comments earlier, just to have it in your car so when you go to the allotment. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, I like, I like to leave stuff on the allotment that I need there. Well, then, mm. cause sometimes I walk down. So, yeah. 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 No, I think that, I think, I tell you what, let's all try and make that commitment to try and wear goggles and gloves and all our health and safety whenever we're doing anything in the garden or within reason. You know, and it's like three, four, five quid for a pair of gloves. If it saves your finger, yeah, it's worth it, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. You know, and we've all got cuts on our hands. We're all gardeners. So we're all going to get cuts on our hands because you go out and you you go to the compost bin and you you know and it's just you just do it. You just you know I prune roses very often and you forget you put your hand in the wrong place or the gloves are worn out. They're getting worn out and that's when it reminds you to replace them, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh, I don't uh, know. Right, Stuart. Well, yeah, I was going to say, thank you so much because it's coming to the end of the show. I'm going to run through these comments and then we'll get finished. So, um, you know the, the mission for this next week? The mission for next week? Remind me. How much would you be prepared to pay for a course and why, sort of thing? Ooh. Think about yeah, it. Yeah, good one. I'm not going to answer it. I'll wait till next no. week. No, think till for next week. You take care, okay. Stuart. Take care, Rich. Bye. Yeah, bye. There we go, Stuart Jackson, everybody. That seemed to work quite well. So uh, that is looking good. Uh, where are we going? Where were we? Uh, Turbo Stream, yes, you were. The Talking the Eleven Society stand was hard to hear, too. I can hear, yeah, this was a, a Gardener's World. I was with Turbo Stream. And yeah, it was a struggle to hear some of the talk sometimes. Uh, Digwell talking about the sap needs to be on your skin in sunlight for it to burn. Every sunny day for two years, my arm started to burn. It's not pleasant at all. Bally Soon says, the trouble I find with goggles is if you wear glasses, they steam up. And if I take my glasses off to wear goggles, I can see nothing. I, I think it's a case of probably trying to find the right pair. Um, if you're using the ones that cover your face completely, they're going to steam up. There's some that are like glasses. They just go over your glasses. I use those at work. They are expensive, but they are worth it. Um, 
Digwell's had to go. So thanks so much, Steve. Uh, you've probably gone by now, but lovely to see you anyway. And I will email you after. Uh, I protected at home. Oh, I've read this one during that. Turbo stream. I watched the camper van video where the side window was shattered by a chap stream in the campsite grass. A stone was thrown up and hit the window. Indeed, yeah. Just goes to show how bad it can be or how dangerous it is. Kate, my plot neighbour had a friend who had a serious eye injury from a stream. I won't risk it. In particular, my plot has a lot of stones. Yeah. It does make you think when you hear these stories, doesn't it? Jim's Garden, Jen's Garden Adventures. I've gone to stream before and realised I had flip-flops on, so that would have been really stupid. Yeah. There was a thing. I remember when I was young, there was a big thing on the news about people mowing the lawn in flip-flops and then wondering why they've lost their toes. You know, just shoes shoes for the love of god shoes <laughs> uh even an old pair of headphones will do in a pinch if you can or don't have the ear defenders agree yeah yeah uh turbo stream says i will be buying a pair of safety gloves this spring for streaming the grass on the allotment indeed it's definitely got me i know it but it's definitely got me thinking about it as uh amanda has said this made me think thanks by gloves all the time going forward yeah, like I said, when it comes to gloves, I do try and wear gloves as much as I can. That time I got that that piece of straw grass through my my hand, it, I mean, it wasn't painful. It's just how deep it went and how much of it that I didn't realise it was. Uh, yeah, and then all the bacteria and stuff. I mean, bacteria is everywhere, but yeah, definitely. And right, it says safety first in all gardening jobs. My uncle didn't use cane caps and accidentally put tomato support canes through his neck. He survived, but so weak he gave up gardening afterwards. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, if you can't get cane, cane caps, what I recommend, you get bottles and just pop those over the top of your canes. You often see that on my allotment. I've just stick bottles over the top of the canes. That way they are protected. And they also, in the wind, they make a bit of a noise, which then scares off birds as well. So that's a, a good thing. Uh, Dave Williams has got to go. He's off to work and says, see you next week. You take care, buddy. Lovely to see you. Um, it, we're going to be closing up soon as well. Turbo Stream, another great show with plenty of good chat. It's been a good chat, hasn't it? It has been another good chat. And these chats uh, really do get you thinking. And this, the horror stories, of course. Uh, Ian Bellow says, remember a stone hit in the windscreen whilst in France? Took six months to get a replacement and cost three grand as well. <coughs> Crikey, Ian, what was that odd? Was that a Ferrari or something? Christ. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, Turbo Stream also uses plastic drink bottles and canes, indeed. Idaho, I had the same experience with a piece of grass going in the palm of my hand. Very long and very painful. Always going, yeah, yeah. Um, Rebecca says, thanks, Richard. Good night, all. Yep, yeah, thank you so much. We will be closing up in just a second. I put cane caps on my Christmas list, but at school we use plastic milk lids on top of the canes. Indeed. And Kate says, great show. I hope Have a wonderful week, everyone. Indeed. Yes, let's close up. Um, thank you so much, as always, for joining us. The chat has been fantastic. That free grand windscreen for me in was in the motorhome. That explains a lot. Um, Thanks so much, as always, for joining us. Like I said, next week, I want to find out what courses you would go on to. Um, so just think about how much you would be prepared to pay. Uh, this is gardening courses, of course. This is following a conversation I had with Kate during the week, and it definitely got me thinking about this a lot more. Right, guys. Um, on the podcast tomorrow, I'm talking about growing rhubarb and forcing rhubarb. Got two videos. I've got a tour of the home plot, which is rubbish, if I'm honest. And then what I did on the allotment today. And now I should have worn more gloves and stuff as well while doing those. So uh, in the future, you will see me wearing gloves, goggles, etc., etc. in these um, future videos. I'm going to really make an effort for this following this conversation right i uh let's quickly get the closing one up there we go right guys um back again next sunday at 6 p.m gmt where we will do it all again uh so get thinking about your gardening courses until then you take care <laughs>